Welcome to the Western New York Athletics.com High School Sports Roundup hosted by Frank Wolf and Francis Beck. High School Sports Roundup is sponsored by Kevin's Catering, 2692 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore, the premier custom catering company in Buffalo. Call 874-4464 or check out kevinscatering.com. Cipriano Realtors and Quitchoff, 58 Main Street in Tonawanda at 692-9464. Paul Wolf Insurance Agency, 2686 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore for auto home business or life insurance, call the Wolf at 835-9653. CSA Prep Star Tom Rapizi, National Scouting Coordinator, contact Tom at 213 509 2935. St. Joe's Collegiate Institute. St. Francis High School. And Gugino Insurance Agency, 5707 Main Street in Williamsville. Home auto, boat, motorcycle, snowmobiles, Paul Gugino writes it all. Call 633-1313. Welcome to WNYAthletics.com High School Sports Roundup with Frank Wolf and Francis Beck. This is episode three. Did I mess that up already? No, you're right. You're I'm doing right. good? Yeah, okay. you're doing good. I thought you were going to yell at me. <laughs> But we are here once again. This is our third week in a row. We've put out these live or recorded yeah, recording podcasts, podcasts, so to speak. Um, we may go live at some point, but maybe that's not good for the behind-the-scenes stuff that people don't <laughs> see that goes into this. But anyways, yeah. we are here once again. We've got a pretty good show for you today. Not as good as the last couple of shows because we don't have the star power. We don't have Greg yeah, Dolan certainly. and Casey <laughs> Kelly this week. But we, uh, we're we going to be doing uh, a lot of we'll have hockey. We have basketball. Uh, no wrestling today. Uh, Matter work won't be available to get us a, a report, but he'll be back next week. We have uh, uh, by the uh, by the completion of the show, we'll have a section six girls uh, championship team, and yep. we'll be out at the Northtown Center uh, later tonight, uh, bringing that action in a post game conference for all you folks. That's we're looking forward to that. It's going to be the flop in Williamsville. Is that a repeat of last year's game? Uh, no, it was Flop and Kenji, Kenji in, yeah. last year, in last year's Section 6 title. Uh, it was Kenji who upset the Williamsville in the semifinals. So mm -hmm. you will see how this Williamsville team does now that they've come kind of kind of over that hump. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who was the Federation champion? It was the Flop one. Who did they beat in the championship? Was it I believe they beat Monsignor Martin, if my memory serves okay. me right. Okay. We'll look up at the history books. We'll ask the Pope. Uh, Bill Pavone later, if he remembers <laughs> or recalls. Um, but anyways, it's going to be a pretty good show, nonetheless. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. You can check us out on Twitter, at WNY Athletics. Uh, our YouTube page, we really need you to subscribe to that. So if you get a second, please subscribe to our YouTube page so we can get our own URL, and it'll be easier to find us and things of that nature. Um, but other than that, it's we got an action-packed show. So without further ado, Francis, you got anything uh, to add? How was your week? Eh, pretty good. I caught, caught a few games. I know you were at uh, the Center Court Classic, which I'll get into during our boys' basketball segment, but I think that went really well, better than expected. Oh, it was a fantastic game. Great atmosphere. Uh, Chad Andrews from Center Court really knocked it out of the park with that one. That was standing room only, people lined all up around the gym, uh, under the baskets. It was it was one of the best basketball games I've been to in quite some time. I'm sure you're used to seeing it down at Buff State, uh, but it was, it was amazing, and, and Devontae Gaines, uh, he's definitely the real deal. Uh, had a couple of monster dunks. And uh, Greg Dolan, we know how good Greg has been. And, you know, whenever he gets into games like this, it just rises the challenge. And we'll talk more about that uh, in your basketball section of the show, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, we're going to kick things off. What are we going to talk about first? I think What's... we're going to talk about boys basketball first. Okay, so our first segment will be boys basketball. We'll be back to you in just a few moments. Thank you. Welcome back to uh, WNYAthletics.com High School Sports Roundup. This is Frank Wolf, and I'm talking Boys Federation Hockey. Um, we're going to start out in Division One. It was a uh, pretty uh, hectic weekend. Uh, not a whole lot of games, but uh, a big shocker, if you will, an upset last Friday where Orchard Park, the Quakers, defeated the undefeated Williamsville North Spartans. It was a 4-3 overtime win. Uh, senior Coleman Jacobs netted 
the tying goal late in the third period for the Quakers to force the overtime. It was a power play goal, his eighth of the season. And then Liam McGowan followed up in overtime with the game-winning goal. Grant Zell, 39 saves. And um, uh, Jacobs is the team leader in goal scoring for Orchard Park. He's got eight, as I mentioned. And Liam McGowan is the team lead in points, 14 overall. Uh, so it was good to see the seniors get that done. For Williamsville North, Andrew Bruno did have an assist on that night. So he's three assists away from the uh, lead. Um, Jake Rosen still has it with 31 points. Not just a Williamsville North lead, but that's a league. Uh, that's a section uh, lead at 31 assists. So Bruno now at 28 assists has one game left against Lancaster on Sunday, and he's three assists shy of tying the mark. So that's pretty much what's going on in Division I. Um, uh, Niagara Weefield did defeat Lancaster on Saturday. That was a nice win for them. It's shaping up to be Williamsville, Niagara Weefield, uh, Lancaster, and Orchard Park as the top four teams in Division I. Uh, in Division II, it's, uh, it's Crosstown Rivalry Week, if you will, as uh, West Seneca East and the, uh, the Trojans and West Seneca West are getting ready to play this Friday night. Uh, it's a 5.45 or 5.30 p.m. puck drop out at the town rink in West Seneca. Um, this game has, uh, it's got history, a lot of history between these two teams. This game in particular uh, usually does not end well, um, not because of so, someone has to win and someone has to lose. It's just a lot of uh, goofiness at the end, a lot of Hanson brother activity, if you will. Hopefully that doesn't happen at the end of this one because there really aren't any games left after this for either team. And well, West Seneca East has uh, Ken West on Sunday, uh, Saturday, but you know, players have to keep their emotions in check because if they do get really goofy, um, a couple of good players could miss not only that game against Ken West, but they could be missing some playoff time as well. So hopefully, the kids keep their heads uh, in the game and they look they're looking past. Uh, this game as an opportunity to to lead their team into the playoffs. West Seneca East has a lot uh, to live up to, especially after the way they finished things last year, getting all the way to Key Bank Center. Uh, so hopefully uh, those teams will play some smart hockey. They're both very good teams. Um, speaking of crosstown rivalries, uh, this past Monday, Kenmore East with a 9-3 thrashing over my alma mater, the Kenmore West Blue Devils. Uh, it was uh, ugly to say the least. Uh, Coach Rozek and I had a nice chat after the game, and Corey Lloyd, one of the assistant coaches, was there, and, you know, they just, uh, you know, what can you say? I mean, Ken East beat them in every single battle. Uh, they beat them in face-offs. They beat them in, the, uh, you know, in shots. And obviously the main uh, score, 9-3. Uh, um, David Updegrove had a goal and three assists along with Mike Greiner, Riggio, Russ Riggio, uh, two goals and two assists. They all were amazing. Uh, to put it simply, I really like the way that eighth, that ninth grader, um, number eight, Dom Casillo, has been playing for Kemmer East. You know, I looked at this one, and it just had, I don't want to say upset written all over it, but just the way that a lot of teams view Kemmer East, because they, they, they weren't good last year. Uh, I don't even know if they won a game last year. I can't remember if they won one. They might have won one game last year, but I don't think they did. I think they lost them all, but still, you know, they lost to Grand Island 9 nothing. West Seneca East buried them 10 to 1 and you know the second time around Ken East tied Grand Island 3-3. They only lost to West Seneca East by a goal the second time around. So, you know, those teams probably didn't take them too seriously. They probably thought, well, you know, it's an easy win for us. Let's pad our stats and you know, we don't have to bring a, a good effort tonight. We just got to show up. Well, they don't know what team they're messing with. Kenmore East is coached by Kyle Prey who has a state title under his belt. Two state titles under his belt. So he's done a phenomenal job of getting this team on the same page, you know, learning from their mistakes, coaching them up. And when they came out on Monday night against Kemmer West, that was not the same team that played Ken West less than a month prior to. They were ready, and they scored two goals early, and then there was a huge hit, and it was 3 nothing. So, you know, Kemmer East is a lot better than they were early on the season. They're much improved. They're getting great goaltending. Their defense is solid. And they we knew all along that they had weapons on offense. So they're finally starting to show what they can do, and they're going to be a tough out for anybody in the sectional playoffs uh, and the small schools. So beware. They, they are the real deal. Uh, they're not going to be an easy out for anybody. Uh, they beat 
West Seneca West the last time those teams played, and West Seneca West had their way with them earlier in the season. Again, it's one of those things where, you know, these these players think because they beat a team by six, seven, eight goals in the first time around that they're not going to get a, a fight the next time, and that clearly is not going to be the case with the Bulldogs. So my advice to those teams uh, in the playoffs, if you're going to face Kemal Reese in the first round or second round or what have you, bring your A game because you know they're going to bring it and just ask Kenmore West what happens when they do. Uh, down in Division Three, Sweet Home continues to lead the way. Uh, they had a very successful trip up to Lake Placid this past weekend. They went undefeated. Tyler Edholm has 41 points right now. Um, the 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 top scoring uh, in single this top single sc- season scoring record is. Uh, 26 goals by Cole Schneider. At home has 21 right now. Just one game left, but that's how close he is. Um, so he's doing really well. He's tied for fifth best right now all time at 41 points. So he can put some separation in there and maybe get a little closer to the all-time leading scorer in Fed Hockey. So he's having a phenomenal season. We talked to him last week. Real nice kid. And again, as I mentioned, Andrew Bruno just three points away. So last week into Fed Hockey before we get into the playoffs, uh, Kanisha's still going strong in the Catholic uh, division along with St. Joe's. And uh, I'm wondering if St. Mary's is, and St. Francis aren't going to uh, be able to push them, or those two schools around. It'd be interesting to see. And then there's Timon, who got off to a rocky start, started playing really well, and now they're starting to lose again. So Timon has to get things figured out in that Catholic division too, and they don't have a lot of time to, to figure it out either. They're going at it head-to-head right now, St. Mary's and Timon, I think tonight or tomorrow. So... That'll be an interesting game to see. But that's all I have for Boys Fed Hockey. Uh, we'll see you at the rink. And we're back to the WNYAthletics.com High School Roundup. This is the boys basketball segment. Certainly a wonderful past few days of high school basketball as we near the postseason. Uh, on Saturday was the first ever uh, Center Court Classic at Williamsville South. Four games, teams that never usually see each other. Uh, that Chad Andrews put together. Certainly a great event. In the first game of the day, East defeated St. Mary's 74-43. to In the second game, Franklinville came all the way up and beated, beat Medina. I'll talk about one of the most southern schools and the most northern schools in the entire section. That was 81-53. to In the penultimate game, New Fane defeated Ellicottville 62-51. to And in the headliner, the nightcap, uh, Will South defeated Health Sciences 82-77. to Greg Dolan led the way with 36 points. His counterpart going to uh, Devontae the Ticket Gaines, going to Tennessee. He had a double-double with 15 points and 13 rebounds. It's cer- it was certainly an event that I don't think either of the two of them will ever forget. And I think both teams are happy that they were able to play that game, not only for the entertainment value, but just for the preparing both of those teams for the postseason. On Monday, we had some games in both Monsignor Martin and Section 6. O'Hara defeated St. Joe's 95-85. to Justin Hemphill and Jermaine Haynes had 29 and 28 points, respectively. St. Franny's came back from a tough loss to Canisius on Friday, and they won 52-40 to over Nichols. Health Sciences... Had a bit of a scare Monday. Uh, They were down heading into the fourth quarter against Tapestry, but ultimately pulled it out 64-58. On Tuesday, uh, the Crusaders avenged their loss to Park on January 20th. They beat the Pioneers 84-60. Austin James led the way with 20 points, and overall, four Crusaders ended the night in double figures. Middle College defeated East 62-59. They move to 12 and 5 overall, 10 and 2 in Yale Cup 1, and take possession of first place in their division. Azan Clemens had 21 points, and Hakeem Dobbins had 19 points. And in a big double overtime game, believe it or not, in high school, Roy Hart defeated Albion 82 to 80. Jake Bruning led the way for Roy Hart with a game high 42 points. There are good hands and great hands. Hi, I'm Paul Wolf. We all know that good hands usually turn into losers. When it comes to all your insurance needs, 
Our hands are unbeatable. Call the Wolf at 835-9653 today. And we're back to WNYAthletics.com High School Roundup. This is the girls' basketball section. Certainly a big past few days of games in Monsignor Martin and Section 6. On Monday, Cataraugus Little Valley defeated Forestville 65-24. to Bailey Gamotsky led with 28 points. Her sister Abby also er, had a double-double in the win. Holland defeated Eden 55 to 37. Cassidy Solcom led the way with 30 points. On Tuesday, a big NFL matchup. Ken Maurice defeated Grand Island 41 to 36. Serena Sordetto led the way with 15 points. Franklinville defeated Chitawaga in a non-league matchup 85 to 45. Danielle Haskell led with 33 points and Abby McCoy had 28. Warriors star Rayanne Rumpf had 26 points. And Maple Grove snuck out a win, defeating Fredonia 54-52. Marissa Schupenhauer had 17 points. The Amherst Tigers are now 11-5 on the season, 8-1 in the ECIC 2 division, and are second in the Class A2 standings. Four of their losses have come to tough out-of-town opponents and their only league loss is to Will South. And more surprisingly than all that is that they're doing this being led by two freshmen in Ella Wanzer and Emma Klein. On Monday, I caught up with Wanzer and senior Paige Stelly after they defeated Blainesville East Monday night, 64-44. to uh, Girls, big win today over Blainesville East. Uh, what was the key for you guys to win it tonight? Definitely our, um, our, we made our shots and we got a lot of fast break layups and I think that's what our team does best is we run the floor. So I think we did that tonight and we, even though the fouls were pretty, pretty extensive, we tried to keep our calm and really just play our game. Uh, how important is that full court press to you guys? You forced a bunch of steals tonight and you got a lot of points off of it. Um, well, we run a lot of practice and so we really work on pushing the ball and transition a lot. So it, we definitely know that's a way we can beat teams by pushing up the ball and on the trapping side, we know we can trap and beat the players. You guys only have five losses on the year and your losses are two really good teams. Do you feel you're battle tested and ready for the playoffs? Yes, definitely. I think that we, I think we're a team that um, has a lot of potential, and I think in playoffs when they come around, we just have to do what we do best and keep practices intense, and I think we will be successful. Yeah, we made a difficult, difficult schedule just by that, so we can be prepared for playoffs and hopefully go just as far as last year. Even. 